Hello and welcome. It's another weekend and we are back with the program Abuja Live. It's, this is a mixture of politics, human angle stories, entertainment, lifestyle and sports. So take a moment, relax. As we ride you through the show today, I am Ademola Lawrence. And I am Abida Lawal. Interesting. And we are live in Abuja across the northern state where TBC News is monitoring development across the region. Now, let's tell you that the uh, Republic of Niger will heave a sigh of relief in the coming days. As Ekowa says, it has lifted the economic sanctions placed on the West African country. Now, the regional bloc hinges the decision on humanitarian grounds, but wants the transition authority to release President Bazou and provide an acceptable transition timetable. As it stands now, election in the Ekowa sub-region costs the body about $1 million per country. And that's according to the president of the commission, Moya Thomas, report. As ECOWAS makes effort to consolidate and solidify the cooperation in the region in the face of the many political challenges, the regional body, ECOWAS, says it is important to recognize the advantages the bloc has recorded since inception. Over the last 49 years, the community has been able to unite the 15 nations of the region around our common objectives of socioeconomic development through regional integration. As captured in Article 3 of the ECOWAS Revised Treaty, member states have committed themselves to the promotion of integration with the hope that it will lead to the establishment of an economic union in West Africa in order to raise the standard of living of its people. He says substantive progress has been recorded on its objectives on free movement of people, goods and services, and rights of community citizens to reside and establish within the community, among several others, where over 3,000 companies have benefited. He clarifies that despite the free movement, levies charged by some communities still exist. On effort to strengthen democracy, Mr. Turay says, ECOWAS gives a grant of $500,000 to election umpires of each member country as support, including sending observers. As you all recall, ECOWAS is one of the major partners of ECOWAS member states in terms of during elections in particular. And ECOWAS spends on average $1 million dollars supporting member states. ECOWAS is made up of three arms in its governance structure, which are the executive, legislature, and the judiciary. For the judiciary, which is the ECOWAS Court of Justice, the president says his ruling is binding on all member states and individuals that are community citizens. President of the ECOWAS Commission clarifies that ECOWAS is standing by the April 2nd date given by the President of Senegal, Macky Sall, to leave office. Also on Niger, he says that there is need for more time to get an update from the transition government as regards the lifting of the sanctions on Niger. Muya Thomas, TVC News, Abuja. Paul Ejime is a global affairs analyst and he joins us live in the studio for more on ECOWAS. Welcome. And now with the ECOWAS um, 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 lifting um, of sanctions of the junta, do you think um, this is something that could um, weaken um, the ECOWAS? Thank you, Abidat, and thank you, Demola. And uh, good morning, ECOWAS uh, citizens. Um, ECOWAS really is in um, a difficult situation at the moment. But let's not forget that this is also a regional um, economic community that is that has been very far ahead of all the others. Africa has eight, but ECOWAS has been the trailblazer. And it is because when you are at the top, you remaining there is uh, very difficult. And, um, and when you are working, that's when people also want, want you to do more. So ECOWAS should not lower the standard. What is happening is that um, lifting the sanctions came out of... Um, a lot of uh, consultation and the fact you could flow in from the decisions that uh, preceded it. Remember ECOWAS talked about uh, using the uh, military force and then the sanctions came in 
but those were not very well coordinated, I must tell you. Because this is the same ECOWAS that has seen something like this. This is not the first coup in the region. Even in Niger, there have been several other places. So it is just the strategic management, conflict management that is, um, uh, and then uh, crisis communication. That's another thing that um, has failed here. Um, it will not weaken ECOWAS if they, they still get the, um, the vibe back if they, they rediscover those um, strategies that they were using to get things um, or, uh, you know, going. So um, it can work. It has worked before. So what it takes now, what has been lacking, uh, Abidat, is uh, leadership, both at the national, the regional, and continental level. That is what ECOWAS is now suffering from. And then institutional level, uh, there is um, what I call, um, you know, and many... Partners have uh, observed that, you know, uh, lack of um, institutional capacity. And then the heads of state, the book stops on their table. They are the ones calling the shots. They have to also speak to themselves, do some self-reality check. Are they doing the right thing? Because there are protocols that everybody must um, uh, comply with. Are they complying with that? Why are they um, uh, uh, tinkering with the national constitution? Why are they rigging elections? Why are they um, uh, having problems with electoral issues? These are an, or with human rights. You find in some places there are people who are in jail, opposition. There, there is no the, the, the space, democratic space for alternative view has been, uh, you know, is shrunk. You know, just because, um, and then impunity. So all these have to give way if a coerce really wants to bounce back. And they can if, um, um, well, it takes leadership to do that. And it comes from the leaders themselves, the ECOWAS, each and every one of them, from national to regional level. You know, so you, you've hinged on a lot of things. You spoke about crisis communications, leadership, institutional uh, leadership, protocols, human rights. Um, so I want to ask this question. In terms of, is it coming from both hands? you know, from ECOWAS and the military junta uh, in uh, Niger, for example, do you think that that transition authority can relieve power, you know, back to the people? Do you think that can happen? This is, I think they stand a better chance to answer that. And there, that will test their sincerity. Are they really there to hang on to power? Or are they there because of uh, what they claim that they are there because of the people? Because if they are there because of the people, why would the, the person, uh, Asimi Goisa, Colonel Goita, in uh, Mali, not provide um, a, a reasonable transition since 2020? That is four years, almost a term for an elected um, uh, government. So the fault, I would say, is both with the ECOWAS leadership and then with uh, this military. I think we are not, let, let us not deal with uh, what I call um, uh, uh, political um, adventurists and then military adventurists. You know, I don't, they, they, for the military to show that they are not opportunistic, they really have to come, listen to their people, and then give them what they want, and go back to the barracks. And then for the ECOWAS leaders, let them govern, and let the people feel the impact of governance. What are they? You have, um, you know, food on your table, you have infrastructure, you have a, a, a hospital to services, you have, a, 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 what is it called, economic development, and then education. These are the things, the basics. Uh, look at the hardship that the people are going through. Across, it's across the world, but we do not have to do that in ECOWAS. But God has blessed this region with everything that, with gold, diamond, you know, uranium, oil, everything. But it is just the management. ECOWAS region is not poor. For the more than 400 million people, the, the community is not poor, but they are poorly managed. Now, another problem seems to be brewing in another ECOWAS country, which is Senegal. And um, do you think um, this problem could um, cause an implosion or another military coup? Well, if um, you, every, you need to nip some of these things in the board. If you don't, but look at Senegal that has been the anchor for stability. Suddenly, 
now uh, going this down th this hill. It, it is because of this uh, lack of leadership. Because when the, the president there sacked the members of the Electoral Commission some months to the election, nothing happened. Now he has now he has changed the he wants to postpone the date of uh, election and then people are just ECOWAS has said okay please respect uh, the uh, uh, calendar electoral calendar and then the constitution but they have to come hard. They, 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 I hear that the president was um, you know pilloring ECOWAS at the last summit, telling them that they are not um, an activist or social society uh, 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 organization. But this is the same person, the same Makisal, that prevented the former president of Senegal, Wad, President Wad, Abdullahi Wad, from having a third term. He came out. He was one of the nemesis. Now he, from the, he, from the beginning, he said he wasn't going to run. Now he wants to postpone, to add uh, uh, 10, 10 months. Uh, how many months? Now he's calling for dialogue. And then um, the, uh, the political, the candidates, or most of them uh, 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 boycotted that. Now, let the Constitutional Council come out with uh, something that will please, that will be acceptable to the people of uh, Senegal and then the people of ECOWAS. And unless and until ECOWAS uses, I thought that ECOWAS will use this as, um, you know, uh, 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 an opportunity to stamp his foot down and then correct what it has done, what it didn't do well in these uh, four countries that the three of them are trying now to leave, you know, by saying, listen, let us be principled, maintain the principled stance, and then non, uh, zero tolerance for uh, unconstitutional change of government is not only when the military strikes. Civilians are doing it. When you now begin to, you know, uh, uh, tinker with the constitution, these are also political and constitutional coups that, is, that are as dangerous as military coups. You know, as we just round up, I just wanted to, do you think that, you know, because majority of all these coups happens in the French colonies. Uh, you talk about the Senegal, Niger, Mali, and the likes. Um, do you think is a case of where they are trying to get away from the lion's mouth? and trying to say, you know, anything that has to do with the French colonies, paying tribute back to them, is what they actually want to do, and they needed ECOWAS to back them up with it. So is it, is it a case of where ECOWAS is also playing two leg, or they just need to stand their, their ground? Let me unpack that. Uh, there is growing anti-French sentiment. And let's give it, it's not by these uh, military people that are, they are, you know, it is by the ordinary, human, ordinary people. They are the ones that are kicking against both the French and then their, their leaders because their leaders have always been in cohorts with uh, uh, France. Yes. So, uh, which France has not covered itself in glory in the way it has managed its uh, former colonies. But um, it's not, you can't replace that with, uh, you know, high handedness or authoritarian or, uh, uh, you know, dictatorship. You have to follow due process. Now, ECOWAS cannot. ECOWAS is not a police, uh, 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 policeman that will go there and then begin to do. Because some of these, the, the um, accords that these people, agreements that these people signed during independence, were signed even before ECOWAS was uh, set up. So let us not blame um, ECOWAS for everything. Some of these countries have their own, you know, large share of uh, blame to take. But ECOWAS being, um, you know, a body that is, has, was set up to coordinate and then facilitate uh, uh, regional integration should also, it has the protocols, that's where the protocols come in, where these countries have all signed up to. Let them live by what they have signed up to, by the agreements, by the protocols, not when, not, uh, 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 per, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it, to, to pick and choose when it pleases them. It is a rule of the thumb for everything when you, uh, uh, because some, many of these countries have benefited from ECOWAS. They need ECOWAS more than ECOWAS needs them. But ECOWAS should also not uh, constitute itself into, uh, a, 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 what is it called, a toothless bulldog by, by not biting, or only, only barking. It has to, it has done that before. In Niger, when a former president uh, uh, Tanja 
wanted to, to uh, dissolve the uh, National Assembly. Ekowai stood up. In Gambia, when uh, former President uh, Yaya Jame wanted to hold an election, Ekowai uh, sent a um, uh, fact-finding mission and noticed that there was no uh, level playing field. ECOWAS did not send uh, uh, observers and refused to recognize that the outcome of that election. These are some of the, uh, uh, you know, they are hard, they are tough, but also the heads of state must allow the institution to function. You know, because technocrats at their level, they have their limitations. It is the heads of state, the, like I told you, the box stops at their table. If they want ECOWAS to succeed, ECOWAS will succeed. But if they also want ECOWAS to fail, it is their call. But again, Nigeria also has to stand up. Because it is that lack. How can you imagine that uh, a president, uh, like uh, somewhere, will be, saying, will be telling the president of Nigeria or the uh, chairman of the ECOWAS authority that wants to visit, that they should not come? I mean, what, what is that? That is an insult. Okay, but again, you will also look at how the, different, the, the chairman had to go there. These are some of the issues because you needed some strategic thinking. The, here on the protocol, supplementary protocol or, uh, or for democracy and good government, there are tools that you can use. There is the good offices, there is the uh, uh, council of the wise, you can deploy the, the chairman of uh, authority can send anybody. You don't need to go there. Because once you have used your last card, it's like you, you are playing your first 11. And then if they are defeated, you have no, nothing to fall back on. So those who are uh, advising the chair of the authority and then the, the leaders, must, you, they must have the critical thinking, knowledge, to know what uh, 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 you know, instrument to use to get the effective and best outcome or result. Interesting. A, a lot of communications <laughs> for, for the ECOWAS um, um, authority there and um, the fact that um, there are lessons to be learned and um, places and there are rooms for um, impro improvement on the part of um, ECOWAS. Thank you very much. And Global Affairs Analyst Paul Ejimi, thank you. Thank you, you Abida. Thank you, uh, Demola.